While we were going on the tour with Bree, Liz had uh, not, she wasn't feeling well, which happens a lot of times when we go to uh, high spirit impact places. She'll feel things and react in different ways. Sometimes they'll they'll pull energy from her because she apparently, in my experience anyway, she's the easiest one for them to get to, to reach, to pull energy from, to impact, to affect. And a lot of times what that manifests as is Liz getting sick. Well, she wasn't feeling well, so she kind of stepped away from the tour that we were going on in the hotel with Bree. And um, she got sick. She got sick. And um, so she went into the downstairs bathroom. And <laughs> Liz being Liz, while she's down there, she feels something or sees evidence of something. She sees lights flashing on and off and she knows their spirit there. So even while she's sick, down there being sick, after she gets done or whatever, she runs audio and she picks up uh, quite a bit uh, on this audio in that downstairs bathroom. So Jan, you're gonna see as we're on the, the tour, we're in the West Building upstairs Jan says, I, where's Liz? You know, because she hasn't come back to join us. And uh, I think Bree tells her, you know, she's off by herself. She got sick. She threw up. So Jan says, okay, I'm going to go down there and find Liz and see how she's doing. And she finds her. And they talk and she brings her and Liz come back up top while we're upstairs in one of the rooms and Liz plays her audio that she got for us and it was there was a lot on there I'll put it that way uh, here's the video we took in that room uh, when Liz and Jan got back up and we were running Liz's audio for everybody to listen to Yeah, she said she got, uh, she threw up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go see how Liz is doing. Okay. Okay. Sam, I'm worried about that. You need some laudanum. Yeah. Now listen. Now listen. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. She wants to live here until she dies. What was that last thing what? she said? Get out of my hotel. Yeah. Now what was it said right after the lobby? Was... Like why took your hair, hair me whiter? Oh why? That's in that bathroom downstairs, right? Yes. That light flickers all the time. It did it when I was in there. Did it? Yes. I was in the dark. Is that all she said over after the... that? That's all I did. Because I, I told Caleb, is that her? And he's like, did you not see her walk up to you? And I said, well, yeah, but I don't know what she looks like. Except for the picture downstairs they have of her. What do you say? Got your what? I don't know. Can't make it out. Got your folks, maybe? Yeah. What? Got your folks. Got your both. Got your both. Yeah, both folks. Uh, I don't know who that was. That's Caleb. Caleb said that he's pretty, like, wanted to be a good day. 
he didn't expect her to approach me that way and he said that was exactly that was Maddie really? now I haven't played it for Eliana <coughs> yet because I wanted this all to be down there okay. so you tell me to get out of her motel <laughs> well and I feel better now that I've thrown up so well, wasn't she sounded, the food because we split the food she sounded like she was drugged well she was on mom and my in the picture downstairs that they show it to you and it tells the history yeah talks about whiskey and laudanum hmm. whiskey and what laudanum it's like the strongest opium, opium that's the first time franklin's told us that he was home too well i was gonna ask him but then caleb's like okay go back in because i can only do so much when you're by yourself but i'm like okay so he probably had a good year That's Liz. Good. She's our psychic. You can ask Jim when I got that first from, from Franklin. I was like, oh. So is that really Maddie's voice? I mean, how do you know? How can you know? Like I said before, you know, I trust Liz and that's because I know, I know her and I've worked with her through these paranormal investigations for a long time. So she tells me it's Maddie. I believe it's Maddie. Her guide, Caleb, he told her it was Maddie too. So I trust him too. And that's because of a long time of doing investigations with Liz and coming to know her guide, Caleb, and, and learning that trust that I have in him. He's always looked after her, and from what I can tell, he's always looked after all of us. So, there you go. Now, I want to say a little bit about Maddie. You know, yeah, she is, it is a tragic story, a heartbreaking story. But there's several of those throughout the West, but Maddie is special to me, maybe because, you know, she was associated with Wyatt, and the Western history of him and his life. But to me, the story of Maddie always touched my heart. So I want to say a few things about her. She was born Celia Ann Blaylock in Wisconsin in 1850. And she was raised on a farm in Iowa. Farm life was uh, apparently too boring for her. So some suspect that she worked as a prostitute in Scott City, Kansas, and later in Dodge City. Maddie did work as a dance hall girl in Dodge City, which was among the wildest towns known at the time. It was here that she met Wyatt. And in 1879, Wyatt and Maddie arrived in Tombstone, where Wyatt's brothers and their wives had settled. Maddie and Wyatt are not believed to have ever been officially married, but by 1879, everyone pretty much accepted Maddie as Wyatt's common-law wife. She suffered from severe migraine headaches, and while in Tombstone, she became addicted to laudanum, which was a commonly used painkiller of the day, strong opiate though. About the same time Wyatt began having his affair with Josephine Marcus, who he would later marry, Maddie had, reportedly, at least a couple of public altercations with Josephine. And soon after the fight at the, the gunfight at the OK Corral on October 26th, 1881, Wyatt and Josephine left Tombstone never to return. Now, at least one account states that Wyatt never even said goodbye to Maddie, just left. And then she had shared his bed and his life for years who knows if this is true but you know regardless my heart breaks for Maddie and what she went through for those last seven years of her life deserted by the man she loved and broken hearted and addicted to laudanum and didn't have any money she tried to make it on her own but there was little she knew how to do you know to make a living Pretty soon she was working as a prostitute again, which is the only thing she knew and that she could make money at. 
and that kind of started a downhill slide for her. Maddie was older now, and she didn't have the appeal of the younger girls. And uh, she relocated eventually to Globe, Arizona, where she was charged with prostitution. From Globe, Maddie drifted a few miles west to the small mining town of Pinal, which is near present-day Superior, Arizona. And here it was that Maddie would die of an overdose of laudanum on the 3rd of July, 1888. They ruled her death a suicide. At the coroner's inquest, a re uh, witness reported that Maddie had told him that Wyatt had wrecked her life by deserting her, and she didn't want to live. Well, who knows if Maddie really said this. You know, it could have just been that she was down and depressed and she took a little too much. Maddie was buried in the small cemetery at Pinal City, which was a, a mining boom town and didn't last very long. Within months after she was buried, uh, the boom town had gone bust and pretty soon it just faded back into the desert. Maddie's grave was first marked with a headstone, but the stone was stolen by vandals. To protect the grave from further desecration, a railroad tie headstone was placed near, and I stress near, the original grave, honoring Maddie. But the railroad tie does not mark the actual location. It's nearby, but apparently it's lost to time. But it's there. It's in that Pinal Cemetery. We took a, a visit out there while we were in Superior just to pay tribute to Maddie. And you'll see a video on that visit. As I said, I always have a soft place in my heart for Maddie. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.